and welcome back and thanks for tuning in. It's Wednesday the 3rd and it's turned out to be on the back side of things. Pretty nice Wednesday, kind of gray and cloudy throughout much of it, but we saw a little sun and some warmer air for the evening. Warmer air is the motto in tonight's forecast. We're going to see some slowly improving temperatures. Uh, we'll also see a threat of showers and thunderstorms throughout the entire forecast period, but there are some days that it looks to be just a slight chance. I think the weekend's going to hold out pretty well. Monday of next week looks to be a pretty wet one. But I'll talk more about your forecast in just a few moments. I have a lot of headlines to cover this evening, and I've had to postpone a few of our top stories that we have planned for tonight because of a situation involving a missing person reported in McGoffin County. I've been on the phone today numerous times with the Kentucky State Police trying to get some information, and I have that report, and actually that report and all of our top headlines this evening are on a computer that is offline for just a few moments as it's rendering a few of those stories and I'll have all of that towards the latter part of the program so we're going to do things a bit in reverse fashion tonight as far as your standard operating procedure for calendar announcements, your weather forecast, and things of that nature. But we'll talk about that the latest with the Eric Kahn situation. Uh, I've got uh, some amazing uh, news from some middle school students in the viewing area and some other headlines off which we'll get to in just a few moments. Before that, Besides giving you a glimpse into your weather forecast, I, you know, I would be fine with a million bucks. I didn't have to have the, uh, what was the jackpot, $266 million or whatever it was. I don't even know, but there was a lucky winner last night. If you were traveling through Stanton and you may have happened to chance to fill up at PJ's Food Mart, well, you could be a winner of a cool million bucks, minus taxes. That's where they sold a winning Mega Millions jackpot ticket last night. They didn't match all six, but they matched all the white balls. Uh, and that was 2, 9, 11, 22, and 23, in case you're wondering. So we have a lucky winner. And the station, in and of itself, they get a cool 10 grand for just selling the ticket. Now, if you're upset because you missed out, I think the Powerball jackpot's up to $188 million tonight. So if you're looking to get a day off for the rest of your life, Full of bucks might just indeed get you there. Somebody indeed has one. Your calendar announcements are going to be forthcoming right now. As I said, we're doing things out of order tonight, and I've got a few that I don't have typed into the community calendar that I need to make mention of, and in no particular chronological order. On June the 7th, which is, and yes, I'm checking my calendar, this Sunday, the Kentucky Mission Bible Training Center is going to be singing at the Community Free Will Baptist Church on Route 40, two miles east of Sagersville. Brother Jimmy Conley is going to be preaching, and they're having dinner afterwards. So come hungry and come looking to enjoy a good time in the Lord. Matt Cottle, their pastor, welcomes you as the Kentucky Mission Bible Training Center will be singing for services this coming Sunday at once again the Community Free Will Baptist Church on Route 40. And the Sagersville Gray School Family Resource Center, I'm told, is hosting a free summer camp for their students in grades K through 6. They say come kick off the summer with them, and that's going to be next week, Monday through Friday, 9 till 3 each day at the Sagersville Grade School. Parents must provide transportation, but lunch will be provided. I don't have it in front of me, but I do know that Coach Matthew Perry's basketball camp is next week beginning on Monday, and I don't have the particulars in front of me. I just got them last night as a reminder, but just to let you know that the camp does start Monday, you might want to call Coach Perry or see if you can reach someone at the Morgan County High School, which may be a little bit iffy, but I'll try to have more details on that camp for you on tomorrow's program. And a reminder, and I've got to find it here, I've been holding on to this for quite some time, there is going to be a bike and hike rally for hospice this Saturday the 6th on the Dawkins Trail. They're going to register at 9, they're going to start at 10, and I have to find out more information because as I am looking, it doesn't say exactly where on the trail they're going to meet. Uh, but it is a big event, and I spoke to you about it when we did an interview with Appalachian Hospice um, down at the community center for another event, another event sometime back. But I'll let you know more about that. My apologies. Revival beginning this Sunday morning at 11 at the Pine Grove Holiness Church on Route 1776. That's Punchin Creek here in Magalfa County. And it begins Sunday morning, continues Monday evening at 7, and nightly thereafter at 7. Evangelist Harm Gent will be uh, delivering the message, and then you are now invited to attend. Now, here's the rest of your McGoffin Farm Bureau-sponsored community calendar announcements.
First, a reminder, the Coach for Kids Trail Ride, sponsored by the Sagersville Masonic Lodge, number 769, is this Saturday. You can register beginning at 9 at South McGoffin Elementary. They'll leave at 11. Lunch will be provided at Elkview, which is $20 per machine. Bikes have to be at least 250 cc's in size. Riders have to be at least 16 years of age. It's their annual outreach trail ride, and you can help supply coats for kids and have a lot of fun doing it. Don't forget about the horse show this Saturday at the McGoffin County Equestrian Park on 460 West out of Sagersville. Sponsored by the McGough County High School dance team and boys basketball team. It starts at 628 classes, and they will have concessions, just five bucks to get in. Gates open at 430. Call Andrea Preston, the dance team coach, at 496-5557 if you need any more particulars. And a reminder, they're picking and a grinning at Kearney Free Will Baptist Church. They do it once a month, and they're doing it this Saturday, and everyone is invited, says Pastor Butch Whitaker and everyone else at Kearney Free Will Baptist. And the only stop on the Operation Unite Shoot Hoops Not Drugs Tour that I see listed in the viewing area is here in McGoffin County, and it's going to be this coming Monday the 8th with Jeff Shepard and his Skills Camp for all school-aged youth. They will get a free T-shirt and a free basketball. Water and food will be provided, Then they'll have a drawing for two basketball goals at the end of the day, and it is Monday the 8th. It's also 4 to 7 p.m. here at the McGoffa County High School. Shoot hoops, not drugs. That's right, with Jeff Shepard, former U.K. star, and it's this Monday the 8th here in McGoffa County. If you have any calendar announcements you would like to forward us for your church or organization or birthday or anniversary for anyone, mind you, this is how you get them on the program. P.O. Box 1443 in Sagersville, phone it at 3699, fax it at 3221. That's following the 349 prefix, of course. Your news today at yahoo.com, Facebook at Ritter Mortimer, and you can always catch programming the following day for any news that you may have missed or wish to see again at yournewstoday.com. Hey guys, Jason Weffenstead, sales manager at the all new Hutch Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Paintsville, Kentucky. For as you can tell behind me, we're just weeks away from opening our brand new dealership and we want to invite everybody down to take a test drive and be entered to win a free vacation package from Hutch Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Paintsville, Kentucky. They're only weeks away from their grand opening, but they're open for business today. So come in and get entered for a vacation package to be given away at the brand new Hutch Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Paintsville. 297-5066. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. We'll head to your Looking Valley RECC forecast right now after I just put a brief reminder out there to you that this Saturday is the third leg of the Triple Crown. And while we've had many attempts over the years for horses who have had a potential to win the third leg and the Triple Crown, which has not been done in more than three decades, there's a more likelihood of that happening this time around. That's the general consensus as American Pharaoh is now set to break from the fifth post in the Belmont Stakes this Saturday, sometime around 6.45, 6.50 is the expected post time. American Pharaoh is in Belmont uh, and will break once again from the fifth position at an early three to five odds in the race for one and a half miles of hopefully seeing a triple crown winner the first time in 37 years. 37 years. Been a while coming. Good chance this Saturday. With that said, here's tonight's Licking Valley RECC forecast. A little more sun in the late afternoon, perked temperatures up, scored an 81 here at the studio, not too shabby. We will fall back to a low of 59, started off at 62 this morning. We're still seeing mostly cloudy skies out there, and we're still going to see a threat of some scattered showers over the course of your evening to the tune of 30%. Been pretty quiet out there for the last little bit. It will be, I think, for the most of the evening. That thread of showers really up until about 9 or 10 o'clock, I think, thereafter. Maybe an isolated stray shower or two thereafter. But for the most part, most of us will stay mostly dry. <laughs> and for your Thursday, we'll see a little more sunshine. Glad to hear it. And temperatures still hovering right around the 80-degree mark with a low of 61 to follow. Still not going to shake a 30% chance of showers and storms Thursday or Friday. Friday picking up a degree or two temperature-wise, but... No big changes in the pattern weather-wise at all for a little while. 83 for your high, low 60s for your nighttime low. Partly sunny, still a 30% threat of you-know-what. Going into your weekend, 
I'm thinking the weekend's going to be pretty decent. We still have that looming threat of showers and storms, but it's really going to be a small threat, and I think we'll get in some decent time Saturday to be outside and do some things and maybe enjoy it. We still temperatures in the low 80s and a low of 62 for nighttime lows. It's going to be a nice Saturday. Sunday, even though it's still a 30% threat, we're getting closer to some more showers and storms that will definitely be taking part into your Monday forecast. But still low 80s and closer to the mid-60s for daytime highs, nighttime lows for the latter half of your weekend. I'm still hopeful that the majority of Sunday might be dry and nice and mild. Monday, though, is when we really ramp up chances for showers and storms, and I think that 50% is going to climb between now and then, maybe even as soon as 24 hours from now. So look for Monday to be a bit more active as far as showers and storms and definitely more cloudy as well. Uh, we'll see a little sun return on your Tuesday, and there's that 30% threat of showers and thunderstorms making a comeback, and it hangs on tight throughout the end of the forecast period. That's this time next week, and I suspect it will thereafter as well. I'll be right back with all of your headlines for tonight's show after these words. To get high-speed internet on their state-of-the-art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24-7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Now all rolled into one tonight's top headlines, beginning with a missing persons case in McGoffin County. I've spent much of the late afternoon trying to get together as much information as I can, and I've spent much of that time on the telephone numerous occasions with Jimmy Stratton of the Kentucky State Police. He's investigating a missing persons case here in McGoffin County, and this is the information that I have to share with you at this time. The individual that is the focus of the case and the investigation is 40-year-old Tabitha Ann Dotson. Dotson lives with her family, husband, and two children in the Flat Fork area, right across from the old Wheeler's Grocery, he says. She was reported last seen by her family on Monday night, sometime around 11 p.m., and I think by her 17-year-old daughter. Now, she's not been seen since. At this time, authorities are going over phone records, other means of trying to ascertain where she may be, they say that they had little clues that were left behind, not many items taken from the residence, but that she was last seen around 11 o'clock, as I said, Monday night, and possibly and more than likely at that time wearing a black Harley Davidson t-shirt, torn or tattered jeans, which is common style, and then a black, which would resemble a black motorcycle boot. Other than that, little information to go on, but they are putting out a plea to the public in hopes that someone may have seen or with someone possibly or anything that may give them a direction to go in. Right now, they don't have a lot of direction. There's, uh, It's believed that she may have been uh, with someone or someone may have taken her, maybe even against her will, but they have no indication as to what type of vehicle, direction of travel, or anything of that nature. So this is just a basic all-out plea for the public's help hoping that they may be able to give them some information to go on, more information than they have at least at this time. Once again, her name is 40-year-old Tabitha Ann Dotson, last seen 11 o'clock Monday at her home on Flat Fork, last seen wearing a black Harley Davidson T-shirt. I'm not for certain if it's the same one in the picture or not. I'm just now realizing uh, the resemblance, but as well as tattered jeans and black leather boots. You can remain anonymous, and you can relay any information that you may have to the Kentucky State Police at Post 9 by calling 606-433-7711. And if you wish to speak to the family and provide information through that means, they've also afforded me a phone number. I think it is her mother's at 606-349-6037. And for any reason, if you'd like to relay any information to us, of course, our lines are always open as well. And exhausting all possibilities, the McGoffin County Rescue Squad have organized a search, and if you're catching the 6 o'clock show, 
They are still on scene in the Flat Fork, maybe even the Jellicoe and other areas in that part of McGoffin County conducting an extensive and thorough search of any woodland areas or anything of that nature where she may possibly be for any unknown reason at this time. Once again, any help would be greatly appreciated, and you can remain anonymous and forward that to the Kentucky State Police. I've got some other headlines. Sorry about that. I've got some other headlines coming as well. And we'll try to get to those in a second. What I do have ready is some good news. And you know how we love good news. And this is all at the hands of some outstanding accomplishments of the Johnson County Middle School academic team. I spoke to their coach, Pam Burton, earlier. And she forwarded me the following information with (laughs) much excitement about their accomplishments. And not just recently, but most recently, too. Johnson County Middle School won the 2015 Junior National Academic Competition in Washington, D.C. In the final match, the team defeated the 2014 National Champions, that being Woodland Junior High from Arkansas, with a final score of 490 to 280. Johnson Central Middle remained undefeated throughout the rest of the tournament, and because of their undefeated status, the Johnson Central Middle School team was first seed going into Sunday's playoffs. In the quarterfinals, Johnson Central defeated Lakeland Junior High School from Pennsylvania, a team they barely managed to defeat just the previous day. The National Quiz Bowl competition, created by Jeopardy! Championship Bill, consists of four quarters. In the first, students answer quick recall questions questions at the end of the first quarter in the championship match against Woodland the score was tied at 70 with not one question missed however in the final quarter stump the expert Johnson Central Middle School took a definite lead team members include Brandon Fairchild Peyton Duncan Austin Cantrell JT Diles Megan Owens Jolene Fairchild Hunter Roark Carrie Meek Brendan Plank Elijah Conley Amelia Kretzer Crystal and Stambo and Bryson Blevins. And at the tournament, 8th grader Brandon Fairchild was named MVP and also selected for the Hall of Fame. Brandon is the only one of three students to have earned Hall of Fame status. And to be eligible, he had to play two consecutive years at the national tournament and lead the team to a national title. And oh, by the way, this is not the only success that the Johnson County team has recently earned. Brandon Fairchild finished second in the National History Bee held in Louisville and the History Bowl team of Brandon Hunter Roark, J.T. Dials, and Austin Cantrell finished in the quarterfinals. In addition, the quick recall team finished eighth in Dallas early in May in the NAQT championship, and Brandon Fairchild made the all-star team at the NAQT. The 2015 academic team from Johnson Central Middle School is is the current, as well, state Governor's Cup champions. And real quickly, and I apologize, we just had a few technical difficulties here as of late, and I'm not going to squeeze everything else in. And that includes we were still waiting on some information. There was a motion filed late last night uh, by Attorney Ned Pillersdorf representing hundreds of those uh, clients, if you will, of Eric C. Kahn who lost their benefits. And then earlier today we were, we learned that Judge Amul Tapar indicated the Social, Secur- Social Security Administration had to respond to that motion by 5 o'clock today. And as of airtime, uh, and with everything that we've had happen here in-house, I don't have any official word on that response from the Social Security Administration as, of course, those uh, individuals are trying to see that their their benefits are not suspended until after a review and not before. But my apologies. It's just been one of those days. With that, we'll see you back here tomorrow night for more of your news today. And we'll be making up for a little lost ground tonight. But for now, we hope you have a wonderful evening. And we hope to see you back here tomorrow again for Thursday's edition of your news today. Once again, my apologies. And thanks for watching.